<laughs> Rick, this looks like a challenge. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys have watched us do some of uh, a little bit of our training on the Maverick tire machine. We've started off a little easy, went to a 19.5. Now I wanna do this. We know in the four x four world that custom rims yeah. and tires are a big deal. We fun. see it a lot on the roads. People are wanting these. And again, a shop doesn't want to turn away work because they can't handle this size tire and rim assembly. And there's some, definitely some precautions and a different way to mount this than we've seen in the past. So hopefully you're watching us do this because you're interested in a Maverick or you're going to be doing one of these in the shop. Stay tuned. All right, so we got, I, I did the hard part again. I took the air out. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and with this size tire, it took a little while. So we figured we'd handle that off camera. Absolutely. But what are we going, and how are we going to service something like this? Look how deep this rim is here. What, talk to me yeah, a little bit this, about this. These, these are really popular. They have been for a while, and there's always been kind of, uh, technicians not wanting to really touch this because of of the complexity of it, right? So it just looks different. It doesn't look like it would be a standard uh, dismount expensive. mount. Yeah, expensive and too. customers that invest in these wheels are not looking for a shop to damage them. They're looking for a reputable shop to be able to service them without damaging them. It's where the Maverick comes into play. Um, it's a great choice, especially if you have to um, tackle one of these guys yeah uh, this is this is a custom wheel it's a reverse drop center wheel um so we what actually, does that mean you know some yeah. people might not understand what is a reverse yeah drop so mean? a normal drop center wheel the actual drop center will be closer to the outside of the wheel here um, this one is on the inside of the wheel um, so if we turn that around yeah we can turn that around and you can actually see uh, the step up for the bead lip of the, of the tire. And then the the second narrowest portion of the wheel is right about here, which is definitely more towards the inside or closer to the center than the outside of the wheel, which is way, fairly yeah. flat barrel. Way right? there. So, and also the position of the valve stem gives it away a little bit too. It does. Yeah. Valve stems will typically be close to the drop center. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so what are we going to do here? Let's, so for uh, this one... I don't uh, want to lift it either. No, I definitely don't want to lift this one. <laughs> um, we're actually going to use this. We're actually going to protect this. So the Maverick has two different ways that you can do a reverse drop center wheel. We can use our standard uh, platen, spindle platen here, as long as we weren't concerned about like damaging the face of the wheel. But this is the side you look at all the time, right? Yeah. So what we're going to use is we're going to use Hunter's flange plate. This is, a, this is a, an accessory that you can get with the Maverick. Um, and this will do all your custom lug nuts. They're, it's completely universal. So it'll do five lug, it'll do six lug with using three of these, and it'll do eight lug or four lug with using four. Wow. Um, with this one in particular, it's got three locator pins here, which will actually sit on top of the spindle here. When we remove that, you can see the th three locator pins. So it's gonna take place of this. Okay, so we're getting rid this, of that. We're gonna get rid of this. Okay. Put it right in the holder here. And now we're gonna actually mount this onto the tire, the wheel assembly before we put it on the machine. So how we do that is make sure that we got our four lug positions here. And then you can see kind of how that expands and retracts yeah. to adjust for our bolt pattern. So all we're gonna do is find our bolt pattern here, slide it in, and then we're gonna use these two bolts to actually bolt it in. And this is going to secure the flange plate to the rim. And it's also keeping a, a really good amount of distance away from the front yeah. of that rim to protect it from any scratches or damage. Yeah, no one's going to see the where the lug, where nuts, the lug nuts are. Yeah, yep. yeah. So it's just going to attach to our wheel just like that. Beautiful. Cool. That makes it easier. And we're going to spin it around. Now, this, again, this is, this is where maybe some people don't realize we're yeah. mounting it upside down. Upside down. That's reverse drop center. So. Yep. 
make sure you turn around. <laughs> yeah, because we're actually going to take the inside. This is just become our top bead. Yeah. And we're going to take that one out first. Seems a little odd, but. Yeah. Once you do a few of these, they, they come pretty standard. We're going to use our wheel lift. And then we're going to nicely put this down. Lower our wheel lift. And now we just have to locate the center pins in the spindle, just like that. So now that's locked, it's centered. And then we're gonna use our speed clamp here with our large bore offset to hold this rim down. Pretty similar to the other wheels that we mounted. It is. Okay, so next we're going to set our diameter of the rim with our upper roller, just like with the other tires. Now this becomes a the standard same... run of the mill tire. Yes, sir. Well, as standard as it can possibly yeah. be, being this size. So we're going to line up that upper roller with our rim lip there, and then set our diameter using our top joystick here. And then once we're done with that, we can go ahead and continue with the dismount process. So again, same thing, we're gonna grab a lube brush. This is gonna make it a little easier. We're gonna go down past the rim lip edge, and then we're gonna indent that upper roller. And then we're gonna just start rotating. Um, lube is good for a dismount, especially with these more difficult tires and uh, wheel combinations. Now you'll see Rick is spinning this tire a little quick and that's okay. You don't have to do that when yeah. you start. You take your time. It's very do progressive. It There's nothing wrong with taking your time. This is a precision machine. This is. It's not a race. Right. As soon as we get this spinning, we're gonna just start lowering that bead to try and break the bead from the rim, which it just did. As we move, move the roller out of the way, you'll see it'll retract before it comes over so it doesn't catch the underside of that rimlet. And we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom, same procedure. We got a mirror down here to help us. We can see when the roller comes below the rim lip edge, we're gonna indent and then rotate and then break the bottom bead, which is actually the outside bead. <laughs> Grab a little lube. Once you get a good window in there and lube the bead of the tire, that'll just help for dismount purposes and then Remove your lower roller. When do we need to switch the hook to? On your 19.5s. Just the 19.5. Yes. So this one's going to be fine for even something yes. this, this big. This is going to be fine for your standard tires. Okay. Uh, yep. Uh, all the way up to your E-load range tires. Okay. So um, we're this, looking for that other hook for more heavy duty, thicker ply. The thick bead okay. is where you really want to switch that hook out because okay. it will cut the underside of it. Sure. If you're not careful. So we'll position our mount head, remembering our, our gap for our smart spot there. And then we're going to go ahead and drop our hook. So we're gonna to move to the joystick lever to, to the left and bring the hook down into the, this tire's not as stiff as our <laughs> other ones, right? Yeah. So the Had insert, no problem dropping right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the other ones we had to move it around a little bit, so. You can see that on a couple of other videos we've mm -hmm. done with the Revolution and uh, what we were talking about, but this one dropped right in, so yes. yeah. So as once we're hooked onto the bead of the tire, we're going to lift that tire up over the rim edge, making sure that 180, that the rest of our tire is go falling into drop center like we want it to. That, that part of the process doesn't change from conventional tire changers. You still need the tire to drop in drop center. I'm gonna rotate a little bit. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a pinch point here to get that tire off. Um, this is a very heavy assembly, yeah, right? Yeah. So what's gonna happen is that tire is gonna to wanna to fall back onto the rim. So we do have a trick for that. We can actually use the lower roller instead of our hands to lift up on the tire. Remember those days? We're gonna use the lower roller to help put some pressure on that tire so it doesn't wanna fall back on our rim. 
So I'm just gonna raise the lower roller up and you'll actually see the, tire, the weight come off the tire there. See that? Yeah. That's just gonna help and you're not, push you're, the tire I'm off. not lifting. That's, that's no, the best part. No, I don't wanna lift. No. Now, if you had to do that by hand, that'd be pretty exhausting after you do four or even six on like a dually truck or something. Yeah. So we're gonna lower that roller back down because I need to get this in a position where <clears throat> I'm gonna lift it. Like I said before in that 19.5, <clears throat> we're, we can actually use that on a heavier assembly like this, we can use that hook to help lift the tire up. It's the old work smarter, not harder. Yeah, we just wanna be mindful of what we're doing. We're not stretching the tire, we're making sure that the machine does the work for us. Position our TPMS sensor, and then we're gonna use the lower roller to dismount the lower bead. So we're gonna lift up on the lower roller here. As we're lifting, because it's such a wide tire, we're gonna get that tool hook out of the way. And we're gonna lift up here. Lift up here. And we're just gonna watch for that roller to make its view inside, right above the top of the rim there. Left to indent, and then we're gonna rotate. Like I said, like you mentioned before, we can go as slow, as fast as we want. Okay, and that's our <laughs> big tire. Let's, uh, we'll move that out a little bit so that we can see it in view. <laughs> that is a big one. That is. For sure. And these, but these are really popular. Of course they are. But this is a great representation to actually understand what this machine can yeah. do now that you see how wide this wind is. I mean, it's a 14 inch wide wheel. This is truly custom. Yeah. 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 And now we can actually see a picture of where the drop center is on this. Yeah. And how narrow it is really. Yeah. And it's, again, this is where we're talking. It's closer to the back yep. as it is to the front. Yep. So this is how you identify a reverse drop center rim. Correct. So. Awesome. Run Excellent. Now all I have to do is loop the tire back up and uh, mount it back on. <clears throat> so again, we're gonna get our smart set back in here. And then we're just gonna give it a rotate just like the other wheels and tires and kind of thread it on just like any other wheel. You don't have to worry about this. This will end up pushing that tire down. You don't have to worry about that, tearing that bead or anything. It just falls right on. Yeah. Uh, most techs will just even just push it on sure, and not sure. even do that process. But I always like showing that process because of that hook, it falling on the hook. Cause yeah. some techs like to do that. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna bring our mount hands in place for the mount procedure. We're gonna bring our upper roller down and we're just gonna make sure we're feeding it into the drop center like it's supposed to. And if you wouldn't mind handing me that pushing yeah. arm. Awesome. See that? I, I learned something. I, I, I even moved the arm for you. Uh -huh. I'm learning this machine. <laughs> yeah, it just takes time. We start threading this on, pushing it in the drop center. And as soon as it starts to ride up on that rim, we need a traction point on here. So. Again, like we saw when the rim, when the wheel was by itself and the tire was off, we saw that drop center was pretty low yeah. and pretty narrow. So yeah. we gotta kind of make sure we're being as accurate as possible with this machine. And we're just gonna go nice and slow. Get that upper roller out of the way. We don't need that tension on there anymore. And she'll fall on. And, and that wasn't much more difficult than a, a standard tire, except for really getting the reverse drop center uh, flange plate mounted on there. Yeah, that's the biggest difference that people have to be aware of when they're mm -hmm. doing this. But I think the great thing also is, is as heavy as this was, you're relatively hands off and you're really not doing a 
ton of heavy lifting. No, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. Which is great for tax. We don't want to lift anything. Yeah, well, it puts the fun back into tire changing, I think. So all we got to do is air this up and get it over to the balancer and it'll be ready for installation. Now remember, this Maverick can handle anything from your everyday vehicle all the way up to the mudders that you're seeing here. For more information, make sure you watch a lot more of our YouTube Hunter videos where we've got balancing, we've got ADOS, we've got tires, and a host of other videos that you can learn a lot from. Thanks for watching and check out some balancing videos as well.